For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. The claim that India has been making to become a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council is based on several factors. And one of them is India's large contribution to UN peacekeeping force. Since 1950, India has contributed over 250,000 soldiers and officers to different UN missions across the world. That's the topic of this week's Simply Nitin. I'm Nitin Gokhale. So why are we talking about India's contribution to the UN peacekeeping force? Well, to begin with, latest reports have suggested that the UN has asked for Indian help again in sending or deploying one more battalion strength uh, in an area called Abeya between Sudan and South Sudan in Africa. The oil-rich region is seeing a lot of turmoil of late. And although there is already an Indian mission or Indian-led UN mission uh, in South Sudan, uh, which is deployed there for the past uh, half a dozen years almost, the uh, UN has asked for Indian help again because the turmoil in that oil-rich region has increased of late. And therefore, uh, India will soon be dispatching uh, that battalion, uh, not a full-strength battalion, but about 600-odd soldiers, uh, including officers, of course, uh, to go and enforce peace and make sure that uh, the warring parties there don't fight. And this is not the first time India has been asked for help by the international body. Since 1950, I'm repeating, since 1950, India has been the pioneer, India has been taking lead in joining the UN peacekeeping force. It started with a field ambulance, a para-field ambulance being deployed in Korea in 1950, and then followed by uh, an Indian peacekeeping mission in what was then called Indochina, which is now Cambodia, Laos, and uh, Vietnam, that area, where uh, later Indian Army Chief uh, General K.S. Thimaya led that uh, mission in uh, the early uh, and the mid-50s, 1950s. So India's link to UN peacekeeping operations is long-standing and historic. In fact, if you look back, and as I said right at the beginning, India has contributed so far over 258,000 uh, troops, officers and soldiers, of course, uh, for various uh, peacekeeping uh, missions so far. Since 1945, there have been uh, nearly 71 UN peacekeeping missions across the globe. So from Africa to Asia and from uh, Congo to uh, Korea and from Rwanda to Lebanon, India and Indian soldiers, including uh, air warriors, uh, have gone and uh, deployed themselves uh, for enforcing peace, for uh, keeping peace in some of the most volatile areas of the world. The world hasn't seen uh, any end to hostilities even after the Second World War. There have been smaller wars, uh, skirmishes, conflicts, insurgencies. And in each of those operations, India has gone and contributed trying to enforce peace. Out of the 71 missions that the UN has done across the globe for peacekeeping, remember India has contributed to 51 of them. It's a huge contribution. And uh, one of the reasons why India is saying apart from its growing uh, economy, growing uh, importance to the, uh, the globe and to the uh, global uh, international order, India is saying that look at our contribution uh, for peacekeeping. And one of the reasons why India is saying that it deserves a seat, a permanent seat on the UN Security Council is the contribution of the UN peacekeeping forces. So, as I said, it began in uh, Korea in uh, 1950. And uh, most of the African missions, be it in Rwanda, Angola, Mozambique, uh, Congo, uh, as early as the 1950s, India has been present on the ground. 20 
senior Indian military leaders have been uh, leading some of these missions. Uh, some of them have become chairman of the missions. Uh, at least a couple have become military advisors uh, to these missions. There have been several force commanders and div commanders uh, leading uh, various multinational forces on ground, the UN peacekeeping forces that are uh, on ground. That includes sometimes even Pakistani soldiers in those UN missions. Three of the Indian officers uh, who have uh, deployed on the uh, UN peacekeeping missions went on to become the chiefs of the army staff uh, in India, starting with, uh, as I said, General K. S. Thimaya in the uh, late, mid late 1950s, in fact, uh, followed by General Bikram Singh, who was uh, India's army chief uh, in uh, the beginning of the previous decade, 2011-2012, and uh, India's first chief of defense staff, General Bipin Rawat, uh, actually earned his stripes, his fame, his name uh, in a mission in uh, Congo uh, in 2008, when he led a major operation. He was then a brigadier or called a brigadier general in uh, the UN parlance. In fact, uh, the uh, fame that he earned uh, then propelled him to uh, the higher positions in the army. Although uh, a lot of people have initially attributed his rise to his father's legacy, who was also a lieutenant general when he retired. But that notwithstanding, General Bipin Rawat as a brigadier uh, really made a big name for himself in the UN peacekeeping force. So did General Thimaya and lieutenant general Satish Nambiar was uh, in fact uh, one of the uh, very famous Indian uh, leaders in the UN peacekeeping force. There was Lieutenant General J.S. Lidder, uh, who also uh, was the chief of the UN peacekeeping mission and later military advisor to uh, the uh, peacekeeping effort in Sudan uh, in the uh, previous decade and the decade before that. And uh, currently, in fact, one Lieutenant General, uh, Lieutenant General S.S. Tinaikar, uh, is leading another UN mission in Africa. So, in short, uh, India has been one of the largest contributors to UN peacekeeping forces. Considering that uh, many of these uh, battalions, these uh, units which go to uh, UN missions, India also established uh, something called the Center for UN Peacekeeping uh, in uh, the uh, oldest uh, think tank uh, in Asia, the United Services Institution. Uh, of which uh, the uh, center is part, uh, the Center for UN Peacekeeping. In fact, this center has trained and oriented and given orientation to more than 8,500 Indian military officers and 1,600 foreign officers from 90 different countries. They have been trained here to uh, lead uh, multinational forces, how to deal with local population, how to uh, diffuse tension, how to negotiate between warring parties uh, and, and those parties sometimes can be uh, rival tribes in uh, Africa or even be uh, right in the middle of a very hostile uh, enmity between say Israel and Egypt or Israel and Lebanon. In all these difficult places, Indian peacekeepers have excelled uh, themselves. In fact, uh, as early as the early 50s, uh, Captain uh, Salaria, won the highest gallantry award uh, in wartime that India uh, bestows upon its soldiers, the Paramvir Chakra. And of course, uh, there were others who uh, were similarly given uh, recognition, either by giving them Kirti Chakra, either giving them PVSM, AVSM. All those uh, honours have been bestowed on India's peacekeepers. India's contribution is real because more than 150 soldiers, including some officers, have laid down their lives in these peacekeeping missions. So it has not come without a cost. The cost has been uh, paid in life and uh, blood and sweat by the Indian soldiers in these missions. So I wanted to draw your attention to very little known fact uh, in uh, the Indian uh, public perhaps that uh, India's contribution is one of the biggest contributions to world peace through the UN peacekeeping forces. India's Air Force officers, Air Force uh, Air Warriors, helicopters have also contributed uh, to this peacekeeping missions. And uh, when these uh, soldiers go, they earn goodwill for India. India's name, 
India's uh, standing gets enhanced because the kind of uh, treatment that Indian soldiers give to local population, they teach them. Uh, there have been videos where uh, Indian uh, Sikh uh, soldiers have taught Bhangra uh, to Africans. They have taught them uh, songs. So India's soft, soft power also gets projected through these soldiers. They are very popular. They uh, also sort of, uh, because of their experience in uh, counterinsurgency operations in various parts of the country, in, uh, including the Northeast and JNK, Indian soldiers are empathetic. They know how to treat civilian population. They don't treat the civilian population as enemies. They treat them with uh, sympathy. They treat them with uh, empathy. And also, make sure that uh, they get uh, medical aid. Uh, they sometimes uh, establish temporary schools or uh, skill-enhancing centers for uh, these uh, tribes in Africa and in other parts of the world. So therefore, the stock of the Indian military in the world uh, has risen because of its contribution, its uh, deployment and its uh, very humanitarian uh, approach or a very humane approach to uh, peacekeeping across the world. I wanted to draw your attention to that. Not many people know it. Fortunately, the Indian Army and uh, one of its uh, verticals has now come up with an uh, annual journal called uh, Blue Helmets Odyssey, uh, where all these contributions are now being uh, recorded, noted. Uh, officers are sharing their experiences uh, in various peacekeeping missions. And it's something that uh, one must uh, go through to understand the immense sacrifices, contribution and uh, the, uh, the kind of work that the UN peacekeepers uh, from India have done to enforce peace, to uh, make sure that the world is less bloody and less violent in uh, various parts of the world. Wherever they have gone, they have won uh, plaudits, they have won uh, acclaim. And uh, we must be proud of them uh, just for this fact that there has never been any allegations of uh, human rights violations, human rights atrocities, uh, by the Indian peacekeepers anywhere in the world. That's the legacy that they have created over these years since 1950 and something that we all must acknowledge and uh, applaud uh, going forward. This time I thought I'll go away from my normal uh, subjects of uh, China, India, Pakistan, our violence in Afghanistan or elsewhere and bring you some positive uh, news uh, and uh, the, the positive contribution that Indian peacekeepers have made across the globe. That's all I have this week. Uh, I will not repeat what I say every week. You know where to reach us, uh, how to uh, give us feedback, and of course, uh, follow us and subscribe to us, our YouTube channel, as well as uh, follow our social media handles. They're all uh, well known to you. Since you know it well, please spread the word amongst family and friends. And of course, uh, keep supporting us uh, whichever way you can, uh, we'll be happy to acknowledge uh, your contribution and, of course, uh, follow some of your suggestions for future programs. Until the next time, it's goodbye.